welcome back from the Daily Wire. Them strategists, my party could endure a blowout in 2022. It could, just a matter how much. Let's read on. Eh, he does what he usually does. Even though I was kind to him in the last episode, it comes to a point where you've got to stand firm and say, listen, President Biden, with all due respect, you need to step down. You got your lifelong dream of being president. You ran about five or six times. Time to go. The margin in Congress is razor thin. In the House, Democrats hold an eight-seat edge while in the Senate is tied 50-50. So that means four seats. It ties. I believe there's two vacant. With Vice President Kamala Harris breaking the tie votes. But a Democratic strategist says there could be change in the 2020 midterm elections. Douglas Schoen, a political consultant, has served as an advisor to President Clinton and up to the 2020 presidential campaign of Mike Bloomberg. Oh, yeah, that campaign. Yeah, that lasted about an hour and a half. <laughs> This actually would be a blowout. The marked decline in support for President Biden and his administration nationally in a key swing states indicates the Democratic Party can endure a blowout defeat in the 2022 midterm elections. Sloan wrote in an opinion piece in The Hill. Now, here's the thing. Republicans suck horribly, horribly at messaging. They're the worst even though they have a damn good message. They're just not very good at messaging. Trump, on the other hand, taught them how to do that. Now, they might not like his style. We'll see. As the intro that I made, and I hope you like it, I'm just learning how to do this kind of thing. I said that Republicans can screw up a one-car funeral, and they have. It's a golden opportunity. Moreover, Biden is a significantly weaker position than both of his most recent Democratic predecessors, Bill Clinton and Barack Obama. Democrats could suffer even more substantial losses in 2022 as the party did in 94 and 2010. Now, 94, if you remember, was Newt Gingrich's contract with America. Biden has been hit hard by a series of events. Afghanistan melted down, US, melted down as U.S. troops withdrew, leading to the death of 13 Americans. By a series of events, it makes it sound like a tornado or a hurricane or a rainstorm. He brought these upon himself. They were self-inflicted wounds. COVID-19 exploded again nationwide with a Delta variant. Both crime and inflation are soaring. Crime is a Democrat's fault, the soaring of it. And the inflation is also Biden the Democrat's fault. Americans are beginning to sour on the president. Beginning with new polls showing that less than 40% of the country approves of the job he's doing. And that's the hardcore cultists. Believe me, those are the, I'll vote for anybody. A ham sandwich if it's not Donald Trump. For the first time, a great share of Americans disapprove 45% of Biden's handling then approve 42%. An approval of 42%, I still think that's high. 47% disapprove. Only 16% of American adults now think the economy is improving. Well, that's the funny part. If you poll progressives, leftists, and Democrats, over, I think it was 58% think it's doing well. Unbelievable. You can read the whole rest of it. I'm not going to read this whole thing word for word. She don't said the polls are bad news for Biden. For reference, at the same point in Obama's first term, Obama's net approval rating was 19 points higher than now. Wow. That being said, in the 210 midterm elections, Democrats lost a net of 64 seats. Republicans gained six seats in the Senate, which was a savior. The founding fathers were brilliant men. They set this system up so one side couldn't go out of control. Almost idiot proof. That's, that idiot proof is at a serious test right now. Likewise, in 93, Clinton's approval rating was recorded at 47% and 42. But put that in context, Clinton's net, net approval rating was 13 points higher than Obama is at the same point in his presidency. Yet the 94 midterms, Democrats lost a net of 52 seats and Republicans picked up eight seats in the Senate. I remember Newt Gingrich's 
contract with America. Now, I used to be a local elected official up here in New York State, upstate, not New York City. I was a Democrat my whole life. I left the party in 2013. I was on city council here from 2000 to 2007. I was term limited out as a Democrat. And I saw the party going this way, so I left. But Republicans do, sometimes locally, and anybody that sees this that's local is going to get mad at me, but the Republicans suck at messaging locally, countywide, statewide, nationally. It's just not in the conservative person's nature to be the gung-ho activist like the progressives and leftists are. We really and truly suck at messaging. The only great messaging campaign I saw from Republicans was in 94 with Newt Gingrich and his contract for America. Maybe they ought to get a hold of Newt and say, hey, can you give us a 2022 contract with America? We'll see. But Trump taught them how to fight back. And that's one thing Republicans don't do. Their main tactic is vote for us because look how, look how much the Democrats suck. Well, that's worked for them in the past, but you can't hold on to anything of any substance for any period of time. You need a better message that they really suck. They're a lot worse than us. You need a better message. And Trump supplied that, and half the Republicans hated him for it. Maybe this time they'll come around and they'll see. It's like a football coach. The coach is a real SOB, and I really don't like him. So they got rid of him, and they started losing again. So they hired him back, and they said, you know what? We'll put up with it because winning is more important, and the country is more important. I hope the Republicans get their blank together. I really do. There's a lot at stake. And this is an opportunity that won't come around again for a half a century, maybe longer. Until next time, goodbye and good luck.